Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, getting ready to go live on Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm in the iHeart studios today, and so we've got a great show lined up. Uh, we'll be covering a lot of interesting topics today, not just companies. I'll talk about some companies and brands, Netflix, um, Apple, uh, Sears. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, I am want to make sure I, I talk about them a little bit. There's some things happening. Um, maybe a little bit on the government shutdown, Facebook, some things with the Winklevoss twins who, as you know, took uh, basically... Zuckerberg has taken Facebook from them, so uh, the idea anyway. And so we'll be covering some of those things. Also talking about different types of entrepreneurship, and I think you're really going to find it fascinating. Um, I don't get to talk about these kind of things very much on air, but today's going to be a little bit different. And uh, so it's going to I'm going to add in some more education on entrepreneurship as opposed to just uh, just kind of general business news. So it's going to it's going to be good. I still have the uh, the hot list hit list that we'll be talking about a little bit later, and then I'll also be sharing in the uh, boardroom battles. So anyway, uh, feel free to call in. Uh, as always, whenever we're in commercials and uh, so forth, I'll uh, unplug to make sure that we can we can connect. But if you have any any questions, feel free to call or, or ask them uh, on the on the live stream and things of that nature. Thanks for joining, and uh, you're joining a whole lot of people that watch from a lot of different platforms, and uh, you guys make it so much more fun for me. Uh, being in the studio, getting to kind of see your comments and reactions and, and thoughts. And, and it's, it's like I get to see your facial expressions. So it's always enjoyable. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with CEO and host Dr. Roland Roberts as he takes your calls live, helps you start businesses, turns companies around, and goes to the mat in boardroom battles. Entrepreneurs, this show is for you. Dealing with the stress of payroll, struggling with time management, losing and balancing family and work, struggling to make ends meet, wondering how to get more customers, you're about to get your questions answered now. Here's the founder and CEO of Courageous and former CEO of the Hoverboard Company, Dr. Roland Roberts. Welcome to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls, your questions, even your opinions on all things entrepreneurship every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Give me a call, 407-916-5400. You can tell me about your product, your service, your business idea, or if you're just trying to grow or trying to figure out, uh, you know, your next big idea, give me a call. We'll talk about it. You can also send us questions at Courageous Radio. Dot com. Just go to the website there, and there's a there's a box, and you can put it in, and we'll get that. Uh, or on Facebook, you can uh, send questions through there. If you just Google or put in the search at Courageous Media, it'll come to us as well. Also, if you're ever in Central Florida, I hope that you'll reach out and be a part to, of our uh, a small in studio audience. You're certainly welcome to do that. Send us an email at office at Courageous Radio or Courageous Experience dot com with the date that you're going to be here. And we'll get you added. You can also just reach out to us through any of our contact forms. All right. Now for my take on this week's top business news. And there is a whole lot of it. Number one, a new study came out that fast food companies are targeting and they're spending billions disproportionately targeting minorities. And um, and so minority youth, as a matter of fact. So this really is putting uh, in causing some interesting conversation and debate because when you start taking the same ideological from politics and government and you apply that to business then the entire way business has been done for decades in terms of data targeting uh completely changes so if it's okay to do in business and it's not okay to do for moral reasons or safety reasons then we become very divided we are mentally divided uh, and so literally inside of the same person, you don't know how to handle that paradox. It is an, it, it really is a paradox. So, for example, 
Uh, you're the CEO of McDonald's, all right? Uh, let's go Taco Bell, because that's, that's what I loved gr- as a kid growing up. And uh, so, all right, you're CEO of Taco Bell, Yum Brands, and, uh, you know, you've got a target. You know who your target market is. Uh, and so you're going to target your advertising to them. You're going to have the the spokespeople that speak to them. Your graphics are going to be the kind that appeal to that that age group, that sector of society, that their interests it's specifically targeting them and you're not going to go waste money marketing to all these other demographics that you hope to pick up you're going to market and spend disproportionately billions of dollars targeting your market so what happens when society determines that you should be marketing to everyone equally there's a few problems with that philosophy number one it is a it, capitalism inherently is not a democracy. When you start a company, you are not taking a poll as to you know what the employees want, how they want to handle every little thing. There is a CEO, there is a leadership structure, uh, a decision making hierarchy that is followed, and that's what gives it structure, uh, it organized structure, uh, in the midst of something that really is a very chaotic situation, and that's running and growing a, a large company. So. I think that it's 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 a very interesting, and once again, it's just a study, but I'm telling you, we are headed as a society towards this conversation, and it's going to be really interesting to see it develop, because um, you just like with employees, it started, uh, and it's wrong on, on an employment, but I, you know, you should, you should have never had to have it if people were honest with themselves, and, and CEOs, if they always hired, focused on hiring the best people for the job, you wouldn't have to worry about, uh, you know, people mandating all kinds of things. But but when that carries over to how you budget your marketing, uh, I'm telling you, it's going it, to if it gets there, which the conversation will. I just it, it'll, it would take a long time for legislation to catch up, but it will be a disaster on companies. And really, you just have to as an entrepreneur, we just change how we how we how we market. We change what our product is. We change the messaging. Uh, we change how it's packaged, how it's positioned, how it's priced. There's a lot of things that you can do, but I'm telling you, it'll be a very uncomfortable path. The second thing, the U.S. Justice Department decided this week that, or announced that all Internet gambling is illegal. All Internet gambling is illegal. So businesses uh, and state lotteries, by the way, are having to evaluate their future and, uh, and what they should do and how to respond to it and really what it, what the what their future looks like um uh, and so especially as the government starts enforcing it so there's a lot of of things it's very similar to like the cannabis market where some states have legalized it uh some have legalized the me- medical only uh some are looking at you know different types of legalization but then you still have a federal mandate i mean there's there, it gets very complicated and the online gambling falls in or gambling uh, period really and online gambling specifically falls into that same category so it's a it's it's a deep conversation uh certainly not one we're going to have in the next 15 seconds and be able to come to any resolution but it is an ongoing discussion and conversation on how to handle it but the the justice department issuing that uh mandate does change the enforcement uh and so you'll see some changes coming in that area soon it was ironic this week because the winklevoss twins uh who you may have heard if you watched the the Facebook movie, it, are they're the ones that hired Mark Zuckerberg to to program that program at Harvard that would basically where these frat boys could rank the girls on campus by how hot they were, and that was how Facebook started, you know, and and so not much has changed. Um, <laughs> I mean, in terms of the way people use it, it's it's just a it's unreal. But uh, without without digressing to the the ills and woes of social media. Let me just say that uh, they did. They're they're invested huge now in in Bitcoin. They they settled with Facebook. Uh, they actually won um, a, a, a lawsuit uh, against them for the the theft of that. But you know, by the time you win that big, you just you, you write a big check and and you still keep the company. And that's what exactly what Mark did. But but the Winklevoss twins, they they went on and they've tried some things. I mean, they just never been able to really get tra- traction on anything. And uh, they bet big in Bitcoin. And, and so one of the things that they're doing right now is um, 
uh, you know, Bitcoin took a bloodbath over the past year. 2018 was one of the worst years for it, and especially the last six months, just absolute tanking nosedive. And so uh, they did a, a, a call, this or Q and A, a live Q and A this past week, and uh, you know, really were reselling it and saying they're, they're very bullish on it, and they're you know they believe it's just a correction. It's you know it's it's not that it's going away. Um, it's just a, uh, you know, the way it is. My, my fundamental issue with Bitcoin, I love blockchain, but my fundamental issue with, with Bitcoin is that, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose of cryptocurrency is as a currency, not just as an investment. And I understand that people trade currency and people make money off of the value, daily valuations and fluctuations of the dollar and the yen and the yuan. And the, you know, I, I, I get that. But when it comes to uh, the, the, the Winklevoss twins, and especially Bitcoin, uh, they're saying that they still believe it that they have found gold, and this is actually better than what, this is more gold than what gold is. And so they, they believe in it firmly. Apple is selling iPhone uh, cases now with built-in batteries. Very interesting because they've stayed out of the, the ancillary market or what you would call a cottage industry. They've stayed out of that. Uh, but they're they're being forced into some of these uh, incremental revenue markets, which I hate. But scope creep happens even at the largest levels in of the largest companies. Eventually, that's what's starting to happen under Tim Cook, and uh, uh, they have to because their scale the iPhone uh, sales have been so disappointing, and that's causing a global ripple effect. By the way, uh, the CEO of the largest company in China came out in defense of the iPhone. Uh, when many are saying that, it, that, that we are starting to see the death of it. So, and, and, you know, there are some pretty cool phones over there. I saw some smartphones that you can, they, they bend and they fold. You put them in your pocket like a wallet or something. Uh, I mean, it was just, or like a dollar bill. I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal whenever I was in China. Netflix is raising their prices. I got to tell you, the hottest stock market on the planet right now, Tom, the hottest stock market in the world. You're watching it, the craziness in the United States right now. The hottest economy and the hottest stock market in the world, the Philippines. The Philippines is where you want to go right now if you're looking to invest. We are in the longest government shutdown in United States history. We've had 21 total shutdowns, and so uh, this is the longest one. And uh, I'm going to pick up on that when I come back. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back after this word from my sponsors.
Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time. Give me a call, 407-916-5400. You're thinking about starting a business or wanting to grow your business, give me a call. Let's talk about it. 407-916-5400. 407-916-5400. It'll save you about ten grand a day just to give me a call, so it's a little cheaper to do it that way. A uh, couple of things I want to wrap up before I enter this new segment. One of the things is, you know, we were talking about the, the study that came out targeting different demographics. Uh, I wanted to give one illustration here. That would be like if the government starts to say, Walmart, you're not allowed to target low-income families. You are only allowed to target, or, or you have to proportionately spend, equally target, uh, the Neiman Marcus customer. And Neiman Marcus, I know that... Uh, you know, people on welfare cannot afford necessarily your products, but you must spend equal amounts of money uh, marketing to them so that they don't feel left out, so that you are not targeting wrongfully or judging them. Uh, and so it, from a company, a corporate perspective, it is a disaster. But what happens? How do, how do you handle it as an entrepreneur when the morality that you are applying to society over here does not carry over and map an overlay over there? you start to struggle with principles of humanity when you do this. That's why you can't just, un- you have to craft your life philosophy very carefully. For example, yesterday, the, f- the number two guy, the former number two guy of the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, friended me, friend requested me on a, on a social network. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, when I was CEO of a, of a life sciences nutraceutical company, he wasn't interested in being my friend. I, he, you know, but, but here we are, what, eight years later? And by the way, that company was 13 years into a 20-year indictment under the FDA. So, you know, he, he could, should have been one of, one, he should have wanted to be friends then. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer. I mean, he should have really wanted to be, you know, find out what's going on. But, uh, but, but no, uh, but that's what I'm talking about. You've got to understand what your life philosophy is, how you process different in, uh, information and data points and, and things along those lines. But, you know, I, I mentioned that we are now in, as of Monday, the longest shutdown in the United States history. It's, we are in the fourth week. It has been, sh- it had been shut down for 21 days previously. We've had 21, uh, excuse me, 24 days. It's been shut down 21 times total, including this one now. So 20 times previously. And, um, you know, but one of the things that bothers me outside of the, the many actual problems <laughs> in, uh, in politics or government, uh, one of the things that's bothering me, though, is the misinformation. When you say and when you scream that people aren't getting paid, you're telling a half truth. And, and really, you're, you're not telling it's less than that. <laughs> you might be telling a tenth of the truth. Because what the truth is, is they're just not getting paid now. They're not getting paid on a regularly scheduled payday. They are, they will still get paid for all hours worked. To say that they are being required to work without pay is a, is disinformation. It is sleight of hand. It is tomfoolery. It is trickery. It is deception to get a desired end it is manipulation don't fall for that kind of that kind of manipulation this is why there are classes in society if you want to get mad get mad about something like this because that's why there's classes because there's a gullible class that believes this kind of nonsense and then they parrot it as if it is truth you want to be a ceo you want to run a company you want to be a decision maker you want to be a leader then you've got to think like one which means you can't think like a victim which means you have to think to begin with, one of the struggles without getting too deep on education is that we teach primarily, and a very large generalization here, we teach kids to memorize, not to think. We teach them uh, right uh, what to think, not how to think. Uh, our institutions of higher learning, uh, that's why they are so, they are tilted or slanted in, in certain areas uh, you know, whichever whichever way they lean on whatever issues. But the point is, they're not trying to teach how to think. They're trying to indoctrinate what to think. That is not a free society. That is, under the guise of freedom, complete control and manipulation, which is the opposite of what entrepreneurs are about and stand for. 
So it's not a political issue. It is a it is a freedom issue. It's the very reason why you took the risks you've taken to provide for yourself or your family a better future, to get out of debt, to to own your schedule, to own your time, maybe to take your health back, uh, maybe to be more in control of your destiny than at the whim and behest of someone else. And 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 so that those are the kind of things that I, that I want you to process and really think about as an entrepreneur. The other thing that was announced uh, in the past week is that Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world with $137 billion, the number one richest man in the world, is getting divorced from his wife, Mackenzie. And when he announced that on Twitter, you know, obviously everyone starts talking about, oh, this will be the largest divorce settlement in history. I hope she enjoys her $70 billion. And, you know, they start talking about things. But, the, but here's, get past all of that. Get really, get past. Here's the deal. 90% of entrepreneurs get divorced. That's a problem. That is a social fabric problem. Why? One of the things that I do with, with Courageous Entrepreneurship is help entrepreneurs keep their life together. You don't have to sacrifice your family, your kids, your health for entrepreneurship. I look at entrepreneurs and there's bags under their eyes. They look like they look, they they look like United States presidents, you know, when they do the before and after. They do the ten year that's been going around, you know. They they do this before and after um, for like a year or two, and they went into from dark hair to completely white hair, and they they were all you know great tone, uh, skin tone, and firm, and all this to, to droopy and saggy, and they they just got looked like life handed it to them, and they, and it does entrepreneurship. It really does. It it'll beat you up. But the, so the key is how do you be Sold out, S-O-U-L-E-D, not sold out, S-O-L-D. What personal development teaches and promotes and everything else is they herald this sold out, all out, all in, all the time, never stop, never rest, I'll sleep when I'm dead, nonsense. That will put you, you, you will be in the grave sleeping because you won't last long. You'll burn out before you're, long before you ever rust out. And, and so that is not how to be a sold out entrepreneur. I want to help people be able to win, become, build massive companies, build great businesses, be amazing entrepreneurs without sacrificing your health, without sacrificing your marriage, Jeff Bezos, without sacrificing your family and your kids. You can do it by being sold out. Not S-O-U-L, not S-O-L-D. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. I'll be right back with the business hot list and hit list after this message from my... Hey y'all, there is not going to be enough time to get through everything today. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. So I'm going to keep talking to you during this commercial break and, uh, and kind of give you a few things that I, I was going to share as it relates to, to continuing this conversation, especially around Jeff Bezos, because, you know, I, I talked probably, actually it was probably the second or third episode I ever did on, on iHeart on, uh, relationships in business. And, uh, and then now that Jeff Bezos, you know, getting divorced from McKinsey and uh, <clears throat> it, it, it's I, I just it breaks my heart because you, you sacrifice what's what's the least important for sometimes the most important. The the buck making the money. Um, when that is what comes first you will inevitably lose. You can win for a while and it'll look like you're on top of the world and you are. You are financially. I mean, uh, I had some of the best years I've ever had financially and even what I thought, happiness and, you know, everything else. But And, and it was because my head was buried in the sand. I mean, I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, but when, when life smacks you around a little bit and you kind of wake up from that, you realize, like, you know, I was all in, all out, and I did have some some, you know, monetary and physical success, but it's what it does in here. Uh, I can tell you the greatest personal development people, the ones that you've watched their movies, the ones that you've read their books, 
the ones that you idolize, the ones that helped you get kind of like, they were like the breast milk to the, to the real meat of success, but they kind of got you started into it. I know, because I got started on them too. Now, many of those same people I have talked to and spoken and counseled in private because they start posting pictures of their wife. They start posting pictures with their husband. They start posting pictures with their kids. And they're like, they finally start to get it. And they're like, I want my followers to get it. I want my followers to see this. And they don't see it. They don't get it. Um, and then when they try to make that shift, they start to lose audience. And so you have to be authentic from the beginning. Hardest thing for an entrepreneur to do is wait. And, 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 and because you got to wait, 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 wait. And then you got to go at the right time. Uh, it's kind of like the children of Israel walking around Jericho for seven times and then they're supposed to shout. Imagine if they did that on the second time. The walls would not have come down. <laughs> the problem is you're trying to give birth to a business, a company, a brand long before uh, it's ready. And if you birth that baby <laughs> too prematurely, you're going to fall flat on your face. All right, I've got like five seconds or so. See you on air. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts. I'm taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern time, 407-916-5400, 407-916-5400. We've been having a, a, a jam-packed show today. Uh, what I want, it's time now, though, for my business hot list and hit list. It is the time where I talk about the corporate saints and the corporate sinners. So the first, I'm going to talk about the hot list because this company... Uh, I've been in talks with for the last few weeks, uh, and they just have blown me away. The company is called Intrade, E-N-T-R-A-D-E, and their website, Intrade-X.com or Intrade.io. Uh, no, there is no .com. Intrade.io uh, will get you there as well. And what I like, like I love about, love about them, actually, they are an energy company, all right? And so we're talking, now you're in, it's a company, actually, that I've never been in the energy space. Like, I have not been on the board of directors for a, a coal company or a gas, natural gas company, or Exxon, or BP, or you know things like that. I would love to. I have not been. Uh, and, and so this is my first foray into the energy sector and the energy market. And it's, it, but I like it because it is sustainable. I like it because it's creative. It is innovative. It is everything entrepreneurship that I stand for and represent. And especially with the work that I'm doing with other countries, I I see the value that it adds. They're working with five other countries right now. They have contracts with the governments and, and, and things because they can take their what it does they've got this machine that let's say it's like the size of two or three old desktop computers okay so you kind of get this it's, it's like a rectangle box and uh, that you can have in your home or have you know wherever you are mobile doesn't plug in doesn't whatever but and it's a compactor uh, or, or a, a converter uh, that converts common household trash to fuel to, to fuel to to energy excuse me uh, that you can use. So they, they, it was so successful. Uh, like in Africa, they had to pull out because the company was going to exceed their growth and absolutely implode. So they had to change the strategy. They raised $120 million over the last five years. That's a huge capital raise in entrepreneurs. Huge, huge capital raise. Uh, you're talking, you know, um, Netflix numbers and like the Honest Company. Uh, I, I think they've probably raised almost $500 million, but their last raise was a was like either 130 or 170 million. So, and that was one of the, that was the largest raise, you know, a uh, single raise that they had. So this is a massive amount of money, especially whenever you're talking about a non-U.S. company. They're based in Singapore. Uh, they've got a factory, a gorgeous factory in Malaysia. I'm excited to go tour that. And, uh, but I agreed to be on their uh, advisory board uh, of that energy company because they're doing such amazing work around the world. Uh, they can put this in remote places and instead of having to build power plants and spending trillions in infrastructure uh, to undeveloped countries or emerging markets, they are able to, to, to put this technology in there and serve people like never before. And, and it obviously uh, prevents a lot of things. It is a sustainable model and it's a very entrepreneurial model. So I love what they're doing. There's the normal issues that you have when you take a new product or you you break into a space like that uh such as how to make it you know financially more viable because the people who don't have that infrastructure can they how do they afford a machine like this that allows you to use that for energy you have to find a way like energy companies are the ones who in, spent and invested the billions and the tri trillions of dollars over decades and generations and centuries but what they 
but, but, but how do they do that here when the individual themselves cannot afford it? So you have to be able to buy it up front the cost, uh, you know, up front and initially for them, get the product in their hands and then somehow charge, you know, recoup your cost. And it's, it's similar to a model like what some of the mattress stores are doing right now in the United States where they'll ship this mattress, you know, that's in a box and it folds out and it just like it's there. Um, uh, that that's a really hot popular item right now. It reminds me of like the old uh, fitness equipment from the nineties, you know, where like, or the total gyms and, you know, those kind of things where, you know, it's going to be whatever it is, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. You can pay, make it in installments, but, uh, or you can ship it back. Uh, but, th- but they have to, I mean, it costs them what it costs them to, to ship it and to, to have that number of units sitting in a warehouse. Uh, and that's the, most of the questions I get from entrepreneurs is, Roland, I need a hundred thousand dollars or three hundred thousand or whatever it is for the minimum order to get my widget manufactured, and then I got you know it's got to be sitting in a warehouse, so I can't market it until I'm until I actually have the product to be able to ship. If I just do pre-sales, you know that's you're getting into a lot of crowdfunding and you're selling you know air, um, you know what they call in the in the tech world vaporware, <laughs> meaning it does not exist right now and it may or may not ever exist but we're going to sell it to you now and then we'll figure out a way to compensate for you down the road if it does not come out so it's just a, it's, it's a problem but, but in trade is doing a great job uh with with innovative energy and and i've been so sick of the 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 confinement of that conversation globally it, they they have given us the choices of either coal natural gas or uh you know wind or solar uh aqua power and and there's 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 different types there's different sources it, it's a great combination of all of it we keep looking for the silver bullet and uh, i just think they are moving in a great direction if we have if if this was a household item that came standard in american homes for example uh think about what that would do now you can also imagine the amount of energy companies who would be against something like that so you also are going to run into like the old taxi cab and the uber and lyft and the same struggle that happened in that monopoly it absolutely absolutely will happen in this because if you think bp and exxon and uh you know mobile uh oil and all are going to just roll over and let you know walk away uh you are kidding yourself so anyway that's my hot list my hit list for this week is diet coke (laughs) it's diet coke tom i was at a movie the other night and um they they do these you know commercials before they start and Mm -hmm. they had this diet coke one and they've got this kid that that walks around and it's flavored Diet Coke or something. And, he, and the whole point of the commercial is because I can. It's like, well, you know, I, I, I want people to still leave me voicemails because I can. Sure. I, I drink Diet Coke because I can. And, and A, I don't want people leaving me voicemails. If, uh, but but I, I thought it's a very weak message, like very weak. Is that the best you got? Like the only reason to do it is because you can. That means there's not a good reason to drink it. Sure, give me a benefit. Yes, yeah. I mean, what, what's it, what's it going to? I mean, at least Axe body spray, which became the or, the, or Axe became the number one uh, men's scent uh, for 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 uh, personal care products in the world. You know, the, on the back of it, they said, you know, the warning was a tongue in cheek. Uh, you know, careful, you may uh, have be inundated with you know. Uh, beautiful women, uh, you know, uh, attacking you or, you know, whatever. They, they were they were facetious with the warning and with uh, the, the benefits. But as opposed to what Diet Coke is doing, and, you know, Diet Coke has a massive following. I saw a great meme. And, um, you know, we've all been there in a restaurant where the waitress comes up and, sa- and you say, I'd like Diet Coke. And they're like, is Diet Pepsi okay? And I saw the meme where the, the, the person, the, the, the lady responded, um, is Monopoly money okay? You know, it's like, uh, there's, so, so Diet Coke has this incredible loyal base. That, that commercial is targeted at what your next generation, what you think your next generation is. I'm telling you a thousand times over, you have missed the boat completely, entirely. You don't even have a foot in the boat uh, with with the market that you're chasing, that is not your market, uh, and it won't be your market. That they the, the people you're trying to target right now with your marketing is the Mountain Dew crowd. I mean, you, you're in this. You're in the right job. You just you just aren't in the right seat on the bus. All right, you're in, you're in the wheelhouse. You just got to get it right. And it 
I have never seen a commercial where it literally started to make me cringe, where I literally, I think I started twitching, Tom. Uh, and, and, you know, what I did start doing is I literally started shaking my head. I could not hide my disappointment for all the people in the theater to see. I could not hide it because I was so embarrassed that a household name company would would ever do something like that. If I was the CEO of, uh, I would I would have to resign over that commercial if I let that thing go on air. So anyway, that's my Diet Coke is my uh, my hit list for this week. It's a classroom example of what not to do, children. Uh, you don't want to do that. Uh, you know, one of the things I want you to think about, and we may be able to have some time uh, on this uh, in the future, but uh, send me your questions if you do. But there are a lot of different types of entrepreneurship, and we have done a very poor job as entre- global entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurs at articulating the different types of entrepreneurship. We keep talking about it as if it's the, uh, the same thing or a similar thing. And quite frankly, artists are entrepreneurs. We, we, we've, we, a lot of the people that we've given labels to, they're actually entrepreneurs. Musicians, artists, actors, actresses, um, uh, people with disabilities that are that I do an entrepreneur workshop for the Down Syndrome Association, uh, their Entrepreneur Academy. Uh, uh, professional athletes, independent contractors, solopreneurs, financial advisors, medical people, uh, dentists, attorneys, they all own businesses. They are entrepreneurs, and they are very poor ones at that. So we're going to work on helping all of those categories. You're listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with Dr. Roland Roberts. When I come back, it is time for the Boardroom Battles. Welcome back to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, taking your calls live every Thursday at noon Eastern Time, 407-916-5400. No matter where you are in the world, we've had calls from Africa before, and a whole lot of places, so give me a call, 
5400. It is time now for the boardroom battles, one of my favorite times. Started this because people always wondered what it was like in the boardroom at the hoverboard company, and it was not quiet, and it was not crickets, and it was not come by y'all, and it was not everybody got along. When you're creating the fastest growing product in the world, the fastest selling product in the world, uh, there's going to be some heated moments, and we had some of those, especially whenever over 300 Chinese manufacturers were knocking off our product, and when uh, some of our knock some of those knockoffs were catching fire, but yet I had to answer for them on national media outlets, and so we had to uh, you know figure out what we're going to do and how to respond to some of those crises. And so today in the boardroom battles, I want to talk about uh, the gas station war. The gas station war. It, it really hit me recently uh, just how heated that battle has become. Uh, so, for example, I want you to think about this. Uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, you'll, you'll notice that, and I've, I've been in all corners, I feel like, of the country in the last two weeks, uh, except for the, north, uh, ex- the Northwest. So, um, and, and we'll be there in uh, next month. So, I believe that when, when you start looking at gas stations, the future of the gas station, really, uh, you've got, like down south here, we have Wawa's in Florida. Okay. Love Wawa's. Uh, people have, you know, little jingles with Wawa. Uh, people love the food at Wawa. They go to they go there for their lunch break. I'm talking about professionals like this is not the construction worker. They just well, it's them, too. Uh, but 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 it's not just the construction worker. I mean, there's like office people, secretaries, uh, you know, finance professionals. I mean, people go to Wawa for lunch. It's unreal. They they have to they've had to create little seating areas like a fast food restaurant. Let's put it that way. Uh, it's a legit thing now. And and and. One of the things, uh, and, and I get there, I get gas there a lot, uh, mainly because they have free air. I want you to think about what I just said. I don't need the air. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting gas, but I go there because they have free air. What in the world does that have to do with anything? It's because I appreciate the model. I appreciate the thoughtfulness. I, I, I think that they care about me, even though, you know, it. Uh, we know they don't uh, know me as an individual. But you feel, as a consumer, cared for. You feel like they are looking out for you. And, uh, you know, one of the other things is, I always, obviously, Starbucks is my is my thing, and uh, so my girls were visiting uh, back in June, and you know where I would get a Starbucks every day, they wanted Wawa every day, so I literally on the way to Starbucks, we stopped and got Wawa coffee for them, and then we head to Starbucks for me, and uh, so what's ironic though is even last night I was uh, I was out for uh, late and. Um, I thought, you know, I never get coffee at night. I don't even know the night crew, you know, at any of the Starbucks. Uh, but um, uh, but I, I, I'm going to get one. Well, I got there, and, you know, they had been closed for like 10 or 15 minutes or something. And so I'm like, oh, man, oh, well, didn't need it anyway. Start heading, and uh, I see a Wawa, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that this is happening. This is about to go down. I'm about to get gas station coffee. And I, and I went to a Wawa, and, you know, they have now $1 coffee any size. Okay, no, I'm not. I'm not promoting them. Uh, if they want to send me a check, I'll accept it. I will cash it. But it's one dollar coffee, like for any size. And you, they don't just give you. You don't just have the, your choice of flavors and coffees. They then have a more coffee, a more milk choices than Starbucks has. I mean, you know, the different kinds of creams and the different, you know, whatever. And uh, and then they've got the flavors, the actual f- flavors that you can score it in, just like just like a, a barista or, or or a coffee shop. And uh, we're still talking a dollar. They don't charge, you know, they don't, they, you know, for all these add, add-ons. And, and so I, I, did, I did that deed last night. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm processing all of this about the Wawa. Now, I want you to think about a couple other things. Racetrack, a raceway, uh, is starting to make a very similar play. Uh, these are, they're, they're not going like the Walgreens CVS. They're not trying to be like a mini convenience store, which is where it used to go. You know, the, I mean, it used to be convenience store. They would sit, call it, we call them them C stores uh, for that reason. But it, they, they, they realized they're not going to, you know, the Walmart's or the, excuse me, the CVS and the Walgreens really filled that middle niche between Walmart and the gas station. And so they're, they're, they, they can't just go the, the Walgreens route. Um, and so they started going the, the, the fast food route, which you would not have paired that other than looking at the trends of, of interstate gas stations that usually have like Subway. That was a targeted model that they had was uh, selling franchises to C-store owners. And the build outs always included that. Arby's did that. It really helped Arby's sales. Um, 
I'm trying to think of other. Those, I, I mainly see those two, Subway and, and Arby's. Subway is obviously the, the most dominant player there. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a few others. I know that um, that I've also seen a Burger King do it. So it, it, it's very interesting. Obviously, Dairy Queen has done that for a long time as well, but that's more of a specialty thing, even though they, they try to, 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 to break into to, uh, you know, more mainstream fast food. So the point is, you got Racetrack, Raceway, Wawa, and then if you've been to, like, Texas, you know, where everything is bigger in Texas, um, and there's a, there's a gas station chain called Bucky's. And it's B-U-C-E-E-S, Bucky's. It is the largest gas station in the world, is in is in Texas. Uh, I think it's outside of Dallas, or maybe it's in Dallas. But it's a hundred. They've got 120 full fuel pumps, fueling stations. 120. That's like a parking lot, a Walmart parking lot. You know, full of fuel pumps. They have 83 toilets. That's that's a massive bathroom. Like you're not going to be standing in line waiting for that one. Um, they they have 31 checkouts, which puts Walmart to shame. And I mean, like, they're actually staffed at that, you know? So that really puts them to shame. 31 checkouts, largest gas station in the world. So you start looking at these, these new strategies of resurrecting the gas station. Now, if I was in the boardroom, that's usually not, that, that's not a boardroom I would have wanted to be in. Like, how do I resurrect the gas station industry here? How do I reinvent how you get gas. But here's my bigger thing, Tom, and this is where I would I would stand up in a boardroom, I would drop the hammer, and I'd be like, people, you just built the Taj Mahal of gas stations, and in 10 years we're not even going to have you know, gas, fuel, gas-fueled vehicles. What are we thinking? You know, what are we? Who are we? How do we stick with what the future is bringing? How do we... Uh, because if I'm, but if I'm Tesla or if I'm GM or I'm running an electric car manufacturer, I want to start owning and building my own gas stations, and I will partner with Subway, and I will put in the same food, fast food places. I will create, um, you know, like when you fly private, they have they call FBOs, fixed based operators. And when I go into into there, you don't go. They don't have security. You're not going through TSA. Um, so you're just walking in, and it's like a lounge. This is not a lobby. This is not a cattle car. This is not, I mean, I feel I'm just in a lounge. There's comfortable chairs. There's free bottled water. There's a coffee machine. Uh, you know, there's there's these different amenities. And then they'll take your bags, and they walk you onto the tarmac, and you get on the plane. Or it's in the hangar, and you just get on the plane, and, and they, you know, you go from there. Where are these gas stations going? And I understand there's going to be, for the next, you know, 20, 30 years, that's not going to be a problem. But back to what I was talking about with the different types of entrepreneurs, this is the different the difference in entrepreneurship in entrepreneurs. I want to be revolutionary. I want to be innovative. I want to change the rules of the game. That's So I would not play that way. But there are other entrepreneurs that are looking for the quick, you know, uh, deal. They, they would rather capitalize on short-term things as opposed to write the rules and create the rules for the next 50 years. I want to be on that side. I want generations operating uh, uh, just naturally uh, based on things that I've done or set in motion. O- other kinds of entrepreneurs, they want to build the gas stations knowing that they're not even going to be around in 20 years, but they will be able to sell it for hundreds of millions of dollars you know, uh, to the BPs and the Exxons and the mobiles that aren't innovative enough but they will write a nice big fat check uh, when the time comes. So that's it for boardroom battles today. It's the gas station war. It's unbelievable what's happening with with that. It's fun to watch. And uh, I did uh, break down and get gas station coffee. So there's my confession uh, for for the week. And um, hope you enjoyed that. But uh, if you're interested in joining my China delegation, I'll be going back the end of March. You can get more information at uh, CourageousGlobal.com. Go to CourageousGlobal.com. You'll see information on my uh, trip there. I've got a, a authority and authorization to bring a small delegation back to Beijing, China, uh, for, especially for educational and business purposes. So if you're an entrepreneur or company wanting to break into China uh, or just grow on your on the education portion, certainly reach out to us at Courageous Global. Also, join me on my next all-inclusive three-day, two-night faith-based CEO Cruise. It's October 11th through the 13th out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Peter Lowe and I, we love hosting this. I love jumping on there for three days, two nights. You get us captive. Look, for 300 bucks, you get you know, your lodging, you get all the meals. That includes the tips, the gratuities. 
uh, it's everything when you're on board your cabin. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, instead of renting me for $10,000 a day for consulting and coaching or in Peter for, you know, whatever, and, and, and all these other leaders that inventor of the McDonald's happy meal and, uh, Dr. Corbo, and just some of these people that we bring on, uh, you're getting all of us and we can't escape you. <laughs> I can't, we can't duck out. The security can't take us anywhere. It's not like a conference where they rush you up on stage and then they usher you out the back and you, you know, the best you ever get is like a long distance picture. No, 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 no. No, you, you get us in, walking in the hallways. You get us at, at the at the meals. You get us walking on the beaches. Great video, too, at CourageousGlobal.com or check out CEOCruise.com, uh, and you'll be able to reserve the cabin for that. Investments, also, we have some unique investments. They start at $25,000. Uh, if you are looking for that, a lot of people always reach out wanting to know who we invest in, where they can invest, different amounts ranging from $25,000 increments in publicly held companies, privately held companies, uh, backed and secured by real estate, uh, like including Marriott's and so forth, different types of real estate along those lines. So uh, if you if all the way up to about uh, I think it was four hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so that if you have any of those kind of increments that you're looking to invest, let us know. Send me an, off, uh, an email at office at courageousexperience dot com. I'll be taking your calls, growing your businesses, and creating breakthroughs again next Thursday at noon Eastern time. Thank you to my amazing sponsors, New York Life and Nick McCarthy and Tom Coast Tavern. Hey, I'm going to be at Tom Coast Tavern tonight from six to nine p.m. It's Orlando Entrepreneur Night. It's your chance to come out for us to ask questions, get to know each other, and uh, hopefully I can help you with, grow your business and to help you out in life. Check us out on uh, CourageousRadio.com. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Roland Roberts, encouraging you to live your faith in business. You've been listening to Courageous Entrepreneur Radio with America's CEO, Dr. Roland Roberts. We pour time-tested business principles into hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs every week, and we could not do it without your sacrificial giving. If you want to engage Dr. Roberts to speak or work with your organization, connect with us at CourageousRadio.com or at Courageous Media on Facebook. Join us next week as Dr. Roland Roberts shapes the lives and businesses of entrepreneurs the world over. Awesome. Hope everybody enjoyed today's show. Great time. We were, we streamed on uh, a number of networks, and so everything went went smooth and flawless. I think it's one of the best best live streams we actually end up having across um, across the different networks. And so um, happy about that. Uh, probably get usually uh, we, around thirty thousand viewers or so uh, total, and then of course the iHeart app. So you can catch us on on that uh, every week as well. And so check that out, especially because of the different markets and the different time zones. It's uh, easier to listen on um, on the app or through CourageousRadio.com than it is to, uh, to, to to try to dial into an FM station or something at the particular time, especially if you're outside of the country. So anyway, hey, say hi to the to the, to the man of the hour. We got the producer in the house. There's Tom. Yeah. Producer Tom here. Yes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> He's the man that makes it all, the magic happen. Uh, he was the one that, that pulled off that the remote show that we did from Liberty, the campus of Liberty yeah. University. That was fun. So that was a good time. Uh, we ought to try it from China. Yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when, when they don't even let me, you know, they had already like sucked all the data out of my phones. And they, by the way, China issued a warning to their business executives uh, yesterday or the day before to protect, take extra precautions to protect the data on their devices mm. from the U.S. Sure. So, so it, it, the, the tit for tat here yeah. is, uh, is getting egregious. And I'm thinking to myself, long before I got there, you had already sucked all the data off my device. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I was uh, last week. Uh, I was. This was just like on the nightstand. It's completely off. All of a sudden, Alexa says, "What was that again?" Or something Real. like that. And I was like. Um, well, hello, Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hello, China. I'll be back over there soon. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, it's crazy stuff. Anyway, thank you guys again for joining us. Uh, we've got a great team at iHeart. And uh, just to be able to engage in this kind of com uh, conversation and information and uh, really helping you live for a higher purpose, uh, a kingdom purpose. And um, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference. And I hope that you go back and really think through being sold out, S-O-U-L-E-D, not just sold out, S-O-L-D. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.